win the battle that is now going on around the world between freedom and tyranny. The dramatic achievements in space which occurred in recent weeks should have made clear to us all, as did the Sputnik in 1957, the impact of this adventure on the minds of men everywhere while attempting to make a determination of which role they should take. Early, my term, our efforts in space have been looked at you. The advice of the Vice President, the Chairman of the National Space Council, examined where we are strong and where we are not. Where we may succeed and where we may not. Now it is time to take more strides.
So wait, what's the order of this? Now we play again? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> we do the talk again? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the first time I've played one of these with a, a series of jugglers, uh, much less one juggler. Um, <laughs> I mean, off like, I mean, I guess a, maybe a kind of a general question here. So in terms of <clears throat> some of these performances, do you think in terms of like a sequence of props or like how much of it is the object driven? So that's kind of a, I mean, it seems like an innocent question, but, <laughs> but it kind of contains the entire world. I mean, I was doing a newspaper interview uh, with somebody from London like a couple years ago before Corona. And they had said a question to me, which was, uh, but I mean, when you perform, I mean, how much is the object? It's, it's more the personality, right? Like leading me to that answer of like, of course it's the performer's, because uh, that's kind of the romantic like, mm. like vision that the performer is the star and that your, yeah, your humanity is of course what we're connecting to and how can you connect to an inanimate object, right? And then I, I was so uh, just um, yelling out, I don't know, like without stopping myself, uh, being able to say, no, the object is everything. But then I realized in that moment that, this is only two years ago, that I was skipping 50% of my entire process as an artist. Because if the object is everything, normally, I, I mean, I bought this from the internet. So this was pre-made. And I can explore what it does, but that's only 50% of the process. Like it's the second half of the process. Um, or it's the first half of the process, depending on how you look at it. But what I mean is, I didn't make this with my hands. That could have been the first 50%. And then figuring, figuring out what to do with it is the next 50%. Or it's, or it's like this. You make, a, you make a technique with something. And normally when I was, I mean, until two years ago, I make a technique with something and I was like, cool, now I'm done. I can go home. I did my job, or, you know, <laughs> go eat some ice cream. <laughs> um, but then I realized, um, so we're, we're here in Ivar Heckscher's house in um, Stockholm. And Ivar was always saying to me when I first met him 20 years ago, he said, you have to do the metal juggling with the metal balls in the metal room. You have to do the wooden juggling with the wooden balls in the wooden room. And it sounded like a fantastic thing to say. And I was really impressed at the time. But like inside of me, there's a little voice going like, what the hell is the metal juggling? That's, it's the normal juggling, but with a metal ball, I can conceive of that. But what is metal juggling? But now I get it finally from this interview because what it means is I should make a trick and not to be done with that first result, but then I should say, okay, let's say it's with three, three balls, I make a trick. Then I shouldn't be done, it's the first half. Then I should say, what if one of the balls was slightly bigger and I try the trick again? Does that make it look better or worse to me? Oh, what if one of the balls was slightly more yellow? What if one of the balls was a stick? What if one of the balls is a ring? What if one of the balls was filled with helium? Like that's the second half of the technique, right? So in terms of having an artistic process of like, exploring objects as a juggler, I kind of had this epiphany of like, objects are kind of the most important thing for me, defining the practice as a juggler. But then how, I, how, I, how have I actively engaged that in my life has been a real roller coaster. I mean, it's been a real mystery how to <laughs> uncover that relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, I guess it's like one of those questions that I guess, as you said, like it can contain everything in it. Right. I was just thinking like quite pragmatically in that, mm. in, in, in a situation like, well, like this, but like in, in where you have a, a longer performance where you're moving through a series of things. So for example, musically, I can have like this setup that I might move some objects around and use some slightly different things. Um, but that is uh, often, I mean, for me, it might be the same object, but used in a slightly different way. Whereas for you, I mean, the, the first balls here, like disintegrated, that was, you, you're not, I mean, I guess you can use all this to try this for, for a subsequent one, but the, there's sort of like a terminal point for that thing. Like you did it and it sort of ended and then with what you had or what you brought, there was a, you know, you knew you would move to another instrument, you know, or whatever, like it was the next I, thing, you know? I have to say as a, as a juggler, um, I was always mystified, impressed, confused, jealous of going to see like a rock and roll show, like a concert, mm. and the musician has the same, I don't even, I'm so, I'm such a bad musician, five, six strings on a guitar? I don't know, on an electric guitar? It depends if it's a metal guitar. Oh, it's a metal guitar, so yeah, how, yeah. How, many, how many strings? Seven. Seven strings. Yeah. And they can do a you know three hour long 
plus concert with that same object with those same seven strings, right? Mm -hmm. But of course, we're focusing on the different level of detail in that process. Like we're not focusing on, is it a different guitar? You know what I mean? I mean, mm -hmm. in, the, in the conceptual way, because of course they'll change guitars in between songs, but you know, it's still the same basic shape. It's still yeah. the same basic seven strings. Um, there can be infinite universes found inside of that configuration. But if you zoom out, then it's like, well, he already put, you know, that the, cause I went to see, um, you know, whoever, uh, I, whatever, pick a heavy metal band from my youth, you know, Bot Motley Crue. Mm. It's like, hey, Nikki Six, he already played a song with the guitar. Like, I don't want to see another one of those. Like, yeah. <laughs> the way he should play something else now. Um, so as a juggler, I feel that tension. But I mean, we could have equally done the first part of this or the second half of this um, with just, I could have just had three balls or one ball. But then it's just like, what level of detail do you focus on in terms of concept that you're trying to dive into or something? Yeah. yeah. A friend of mine, um, David Pockney, he has this quote, which is from somebody, I don't remember who it's from, so I just threw his name in as a, as a placeholder, but um, where in all the possible things that can happen in the universe in terms of aesthetics or art or whatever, performance, and I think he was meaning specifically with improvisation, that generally speaking, the least interesting thing in the room is someone playing around with a block of wood with metal on it. And I guess in that sense, it meant a guitar. So <laughs> all the things that could be going on in the world, like someone obsessing over this object here, um, is very uninteresting in the scale of things, you know. So it's it's almost like the almost the inverse of what you're saying. But given the the nature of your discipline, that's that's kind of what you're talking about, like that level of focus and detail. So like uh, viewing a guitar as a, a piece of wood with metal on it is is quite reductive. I mean, it, yeah, and it, I mean it's also the culture that like of our two worlds. Like mm. there's the the musical cultural, so we can have that context for those comments that mm. we're talking about with guitars. But there's also then like the juggling world context of like you know, exploring balls that fall apart. It's just, um, it's just, it's just a, it's a big new idea to jump into. Like, so it's not like people have done this idea to death and then we've exhausted it. And now I'm doing a trite cliched hmm. investigation here, which would totally change maybe how I would have done the first part of the show. Like this is new, this is just new for me. So there's just like a real basic like curiosity of like, you know, hey, what did, what did we do now in the first, when we played together now? It's just like, oh, I wonder what's gonna happen. Like I grab my flashlight from home maybe I could light the balloon with that. Like it would look good. I don't know. Yeah. Um, because there's also an element of like, we were going to improvise together. So I thought, why, why don't I also take that leap on myself to improvise in like, you know, in my world as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I had a question about that. Yeah. It's really been bothering me and I think you might <laughs> relieve me of this burden or stress, but like, so we have preset technique, like we have technical chops, we have skills. I mean, we have techniques that have been developed to do certain things. You know how to make certain sounds. I know how to make certain throws and catches, right? But we're gonna to improvise together. So at what level of granularity does that relationship happen where it's like, I can, obviously I'm not inventing every single thing new all the time, every single second. But at the same time, I'm not doing things I've done. This wasn't anything I'd ever done before in this way, right? Yeah. And so, where how do you how do you navigate this tension between the two worlds of like oh i'm going to make this sound that i've made before but like somehow it's still relevant and new in that moment do you think of it as new in that moment or how yeah do you... yeah, I, I, yeah i mean there's there's certain levels of it and i'll answer this in like a, a, a kind of honest but banal sounding way and then maybe in, in, a, in a, a different way but um, so in my background in history, I've spent a lot of time developing technique for certain instruments. So I have a certain facility, but that doesn't always necessarily come through or is, is often unnecessary for a certain result. So even though there's a facility there and it, with, let's say that this particular thing that the first half was quite busy on the drum, right? Um, so I know that there are certain things that I drew on, but I think that was in response to the sort of cacophony of movement. So I wanted to kind of play in that space. So whether or not some things that I may have done before came out specifically in that, like certain rudiments or certain specific techniques um, is almost irrelevant because the it's a response. Right, right now you've asked me a question that I'm, I'm responding to you in, in formulated like English. I'm right. putting together sentences and grammar and these words that I've, I've used before, but I'm communicating a point that I perhaps haven't but done before. So it's a similar thing to that. So in response to that moment, the, the reaction is earnest and for me, new. That's a super cool answer, man. You just relieved me of that. No, but this analogy of speech was like perfect. Yeah. Um, so I noticed a couple, like now we're being pretty conceptual about mm. like what we're doing, but like I had a couple of like kind of more um, 
funny, just funny questions. I mean, there, there is this, there's a bunch of like um, fantasy in terms of thinking, intellectualizing about juggling in one way. I mean, there's this idea that um, are you moving the object or is the object moving you, right? Like I'm in the service of the pattern. Like the pattern is some sort of mm. universal absolute that exists. Um, it's invisible, but I, I, I am in service to it. So then my body has to, it moves my body to create it. Do you ever feel like, like that's super, I mean, I don't know if I subscribe to that, but like, do you ever feel that with your work where it's like, man, this, the, the beat or the, the, the sound is making my arm move like this? No, but I mean, there's, so for example, I, I guess with something like, like drumming, to use that specifically because it uses a, a long series of movements. So in order for me to hit that thing, then my brain needed to start that process. Yeah considerably before because I have to do it and fire synapses in the shoulder and all so there's a lot of things that like the the, the uh, flesh bag of me needs to attend to <laughs> in order to do that thing right. so in, in, in some sense like it like a lot of it there's a physicality that's at service to what I want to do and then with a lot of things specifically percussion related but like certain things will be kinetic and in motion so like if I throw a thing or the thing does that um, right. it, it will then take on its its own life, mm. but it, it I don't think it means necessarily the same thing that it might in your sense, like where you're you're doing like there is a pattern. You've put these balls in the air, I see. and they need to, unless the room is spinning or, or gravity or some other thing, su super I think <laughs> fantastical I, happens. I mean, I think I approach my work more like you do, like yeah. I'm more in the and like oh, move my arm first. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's a kind of a funny idea to think about. Um, and so then, so then, the, just following on from that, maybe um, a final like kind mm -hmm. of thing to cover, or or like super curious to know, are you following us and me, or are we following you, or are we following each other at various times, or how do you conceive of that idea of leader follower? Or yeah, is, is there anything like that in your world? Yes, uh, particularly when it's uh, duo improvisation. So like if it's like me and another person, and I, I mean that specifically because there can be moments where there's a dialogue happening but that is not necessarily an agreement so like i can I, I know where you are and what you're saying but i'm disagreeing with you and i'm choosing to talk over you or whatever so there there you can have a clear understanding of relationship but those relationships can be you know cohesive they can be antagonistic they can be wow. they can be following or supporting so there, there's a lot of roles that can be projected from that um, interaction much like we can with talking or much like with something else mm. in this context because we're crossing uh, cross-disciplinary but more specifically there I don't have a preconceived notion of how we should interact beyond the fact that I understand that there's pattern and there's a lot of pattern and the conversations that we've had in the past and that like um to that I, I think it's a little like gauche to have uh like mickey mousing pantomime like like so that like specifically avoiding that I mean not that I would do that in general but like I mean again like we're in Ivo Hexer's living room and like he always, you know, he always says, um, it's interpretation, not illustration. And, yeah, like, yeah. and that's, you know, with juggling, it's such a young art form to meet music. It's so easy to illustrate the music, but in terms of what does it mean to interpret the music? And there was a funny little, uh, I don't know, step into that direction, which was, if you want to really interpret the music with juggling, you kind of almost have to need, you need to have like little small, in one way, mistakes in terms of illustration. So it's like, you're not just filling out every single beat metrically on the mm. music but you kind of have like a moment where you miss that beat and wait oh but there's an interpretation there of your feeling of maybe that needs to have a suspension you know and i think that was kind of a funny uh, little thing to realize that yeah, yeah to interpret you might be have to so mistake I, illustrating <laughs> and i agree because i think that can even in just a musical context if somebody starts doing a thing and you start imitating them that that can be like super superficial even though it's like oh right. i know what you're doing oh, right. <laughs> oh. but like that that's uninteresting you know right right um but i think in, in this context specifically like the, like some of my thought process during the beginning because it was chaotic and uh, uh, a lot of downbeats like literally the, the balls falling in one so i tried to kind of play in that chaotic space and then as the, the the balls were unwinding and as things were coming to conclusion, I tried to go into that more that sort of space, and I had more of the like, yeah, like a winding down, yeah, 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 gesture. So not in a very like one to one basis, but in like a process coming to conclusion sense. So I wanted to kind of get into that um, musical space with that. You I know, I think Ivar is ready for the next uh, play. Yeah, is it good? Yes, yeah. but but. First, uh, instead of interpret or illustrate, make visible and make audible. 
to make what you see him do audible, to make what he makes you hear mm. visible. Right. I think that's a, a path where you can start something. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I should say that just reminds me of one thing and then then let's play like yeah, all this, yeah. yeah, but like just to say there's this idea about juggling and music There's a relationship there that as a juggler we find very I think interesting and, and new to To explore mm -hmm. or yeah, invigorating instead of interesting. It's invigorating to explore um, But it's not so much That music is juggling or juggling is music, but it's the juggling of the music. It's the music of the juggling if that makes any sense to you, but that's what we talk about a lot. It's like, what is the music of the juggling? It's not juggling music. It's there's a new there's a third thing there. It's not one or the other. It's this yeah. other thing, and that's what we we realize we're not. I'm not as a juggler. I'm not trying to do music, mm. and I thought I was when I started this work 20 years ago, yeah. and then I realized, oh, I'm not doing music. Like yeah, I mean maybe there's <laughs> an analog there to kind of maybe end on that point, but like like yeah. it, with the advent of photography. Uh, vanilla portraiture became less um, significant, but also less prevalent in that like, we, we got a photo, we can do that now. So painting then became right. another thing because it's no longer yep. representative or illustrative in, in that sense, you know? Cool, let's make yeah. a painting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna get ready for one thing here. Mm -hmm. um, and then, Ibar, I guess those balls are locked? No, they're not locked? Not locked. Okay, so, Good. Then they're, they're ready to go. They're ready to go. Um.